Day 360, Tuesday, February 6, 2 Chronicles 6 12, 42 and 1 Kings 8 22, 53. 2 Chronicles 6 12-42 NKJV Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands, for Solomon had made a bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court, and he stood on it, knelt down on his knees before all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven or on earth like you, who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. You have kept what you promised your servant David my father, you have both spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand, as it is this day. Therefore, Lord God of Israel, now keep what you promised your servant David my father, saying, you shall not fail to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel, only if your sons take heed to their way, that they walk in my law as you have walked before me. And now, O Lord God of Israel, let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant David. But will God indeed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you, how much less this temple which I have built. Yet regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication, O Lord my God, and listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you, that your eyes may be opened toward this temple day and night, toward the place where you said you would put your name, that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes toward this place, and may you hear the supplications of your servant and of your people Israel, when they pray toward this place, hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive, if anyone sins against his neighbor, and is forced to take an oath, and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, then hear from heaven, and act, and judge your servants, bringing retribution on the wicked by bringing his way on his own head, and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. Or if your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you, and return and confess your name, and pray and make supplication before you in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them back to the land which you gave to them and their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, when they prayed toward this place and confess your name, and turn from their sin because you afflict them, then hear in heaven, and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, that you may teach them the good way in which they should walk, and send rain on your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance. When there is famine in the land, pestilence or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, when their enemies besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, Whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone, or by all your people Israel, when each one knows his own burden and his own grief, and spreads out his hands to this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, and forgive, and give to everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of the sons of men, that they may fear you to walk in your ways as long as they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. Moreover, concerning a foreigner, who is not of your people Israel, but has come from a far country for the sake of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, when they come and pray in this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, that all peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you as do your people Israel, and that they may know that this temple which I have built is called by your name. When your people go out to battle against their enemies, wherever you send them, and when they pray to you toward this city which you have chosen and the temple which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause, when they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin and you become angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, 
and they take them captive to a land far or near. Yet when they come to themselves in the land where they were carried captive, and repent, and make supplication to you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done wrong, and have committed wickedness, and when they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, where they have been carried captive, and prayed toward their land which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and toward the temple which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place their prayer and their supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, my God, I pray, let your eyes be open and let your ears be attentive to the prayer made in this place. Now therefore, arise, O Lord God, to your resting place, you in the ark of your strength. Let your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let your saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, do not turn away the face of your anointed. Remember the mercies of your servant David. 1 Kings 8 22-53 NKJV Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven above or on earth below like you, who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. You have kept what you promised your servant David my father, you have both spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand, as it is this day. Therefore, Lord God of Israel, now keep what you promised your servant David my father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel, only if your sons take heed to their way, that they walk before me as you have walked before me. And now I pray, O God of Israel, let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant David my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you, how much less this temple which I have built. Yet regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication, O Lord my God, and listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you today that your eyes may be open toward this temple night and day, toward the place of which you said, My name shall be there, that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes toward this place. And may you hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel, when they pray toward this place, here in heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive, when anyone sins against his neighbor, and is forced to take an oath, and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, then hear in heaven, and act, and judge your servants, condemning the wicked, bringing his way on his head, and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. When your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you, and when they turn back to you and confess your name, and pray and make supplication to you in this temple, then hear in heaven, and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them back to the land which you gave to their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, when they pray toward this place and confess your name, and turn from their sin because you afflict them, then hear in heaven, and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, that you may teach them the good way in which they should walk and send rain on your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance. When there is famine in the land, pestilence or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, when their enemy besieges them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone, or by all your people Israel, when each one knows the plague of his own heart, and spreads out his hands toward this temple. Then hear in heaven your dwelling place, and forgive, and act, and give to everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men, that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. Moreover, concerning a foreigner, who is not of your people Israel, but has come from a far country for your name's sake, 
for they will hear of your great name and your strong hand and your outstretched arm, when he comes and prays toward this temple, here in heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, that all peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and that they may know that this temple which I have built is called by your name. When your people go out to battle against their enemy, wherever you send them, and when they pray to the Lord toward the city which you have chosen and the temple which I have built for your name, then hear in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause, when they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, and they take them captive to the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet when they come to themselves in the land where they were carried captive, and repent, and make supplication to you in the land of those who took them captive, saying, We have sinned and done wrong, we have committed wickedness, and when they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies who led them away captive, and pray to you toward their land which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen and the temple which I have built for your name, then hear in heaven your dwelling place their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you, and all their transgressions which they have transgressed against you, and grant them compassion before those who took them captive, that they may have compassion on them, for they are your people and your inheritance, whom you brought out of Egypt, out of the iron furnace, that your eyes may be open to the supplication of your servant and the supplication of your people Israel, to listen to them whenever they call to you. For you separated them from among all the peoples of the earth to be your inheritance, as you spoke by your servant Moses, when you brought our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. Daily Deep Dive The UCG Reading Program states, Solomon's prayer of dedication is interesting in many respects. In 2 Chronicles 6 12-17 Solomon brings up God's promise to David and asks for its fulfillment. This passage is used by some to declare that the promise of God to David in 2 Samuel 7 is conditional, with gainsayers noting that Solomon said, You shall not fail to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel, only if your sons take heed to their way, that they walk in my law as you have walked before me, Verse 16. The only if, it is asserted, makes it conditional. And since David's descendants did not continue to walk in his ways, God was not bound to fulfill the promise of an enduring dynasty, except, they further assert, through Christ, David's greater son. But this is simply not so. This phrase, only if, is a Hebraism, that is, a figure of speech that cannot be literally translated into another language and still retain its meaning. In Hebrew, the phrase only if conveys the general meaning but be certain that, and is intended to convey the strongest of affirmations, injunctions or prohibitions. It does not convey qualification. Solomon's dedicatory prayer makes repeated mention of praying toward this place, a clear intimation that the temple was to become the center of a world religion, that is, the true religion God gave was to become worldwide. In his prayer, Solomon anticipates both the worldwide dispersal of Israelites, whether through commerce, colonization or captivity, and a turning of the Gentiles to the worship of God. Whether he understood the full implications of his words is unclear but God certainly inspired him with prophetic thoughts. Specific subjects include answering prayers for forgiveness, justice, deliverance from captivity and military attack, mercy while in captivity, rain and good harvests, respite from plagues and agricultural devastation, and the prayers of the Gentiles made in the temple, implying Gentile converts to the true religion. In all these matters, Solomon beseeches God to hear and answer. But Solomon does not portray God as a sort of cosmic genie, duty-bound to grant wishes upon request. Before mentioning the various kinds of things that people would pray for, 
Solomon soberly conditions the minds of his hearers as to exactly who will dwell within this magnificent temple. God is a God of kept promises given freely in grace, not because he is under compulsion to do so. And he is a God who cannot be confined to a building, no matter how magnificent it is. God dwells in heaven and is not man's creation. God is supreme and cannot be bound. In short, God is sovereign, and every petitioner must have an acute awareness of his need for God's mercy, grace and providence. And, 